Facts, not fear. We have been making that our mission during the pandemic. And to that end, we uh, have our nine news uh, health expert, Dr. Pyle Coley, with us here again to answer questions about the virus that you have texted us. Thank you again for sticking around. First question of viewer asked, does the altitude affect COVID-19 uh, for recovery of people who get it? Uh, this is an important question, Gary, because we do know from other studies that altitude can affect immune function, in particular T cells, but that really increases your susceptibility to bacteria and not viruses as much. We also know that this virus tends to spread faster at colder, drier climates, which you can see at altitude as well. Having said all that, we really don't have a lot of evidence about whether your increased susceptibility based on altitude to this virus. Now in, in Colorado, we did have really the start of all this happen up in the high country, but we believe that that was because of the tourists that came to ski rather than the altitude itself. Now, if you do end up getting the virus, obviously the altitude is going to affect the severity of your symptoms because there's less oxygen in the air. So you're more likely to end up on supplemental oxygen or to feel short of breath. And similarly, if you recover from the virus and have are one of those people that have, you know, permanent problems with your lung function, then it is possible that you could also have problems at altitude even after you've recovered from the virus. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Okay, a second viewer asks, my husband and I are staying in except for grocery shopping and walks. We all seem to be well. We wonder if it's okay to visit others if we wear masks and stay six feet apart. So one thing we have learned in the last couple of weeks is that 25 to 50 percent of people who are spreading this virus have no symptoms and don't actually know that they're sick. And that's the, the main reason why we're now starting to wear masks to minimize that. But the masks are not foolproof. And because that percentage is so high at this time, really, the safest thing to do is to avoid face to face contact because having symptoms doesn't really tell you whether you're sick, whether you're at risk to infect somebody else or somebody else is at risk to infect you. So best to avoid face-to-face -face contact for the time being, just given how widespread the virus is in our community. Yep, just FaceTime them. Yep, we can do that. All right, That's a right. third question. A yeah. viewer asks, what soap is best to use for washing your hands, body, or hair during this time? So we've been getting this question a lot and the good news is any soap works as long as it's soap. So it doesn't have to be antibacterial or any special kind of soap, bar soap, gel soap, foam soap. The most important thing, however, is to make lots and lots of lather because those that lather represents little um, particles called micelles that actually disrupt the outer membrane of the virus. So lather is the first thing that's really important. The second thing that's important is friction. So friction actually also mechanically disrupts disrupts the virus and causes that lather to penetrate. And then the final thing that's really important is that 20 seconds of contact so that you're really making sure you're giving it enough time to work. So lather, friction, and 20 seconds, most important. It doesn't really matter what soap you use. Yep, it is so easy to do and, and can help keep you safe. Dr. Coley, as always, thank you.